Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. The Formula 1 season has finally gone on their summer break and with half the season already gone, let's take a look at every driver and rate out of 10 how their season is going. 1 being terrible and 10 being glorious. We have had 13 races so far, so all 20 drivers will be judged on their performances against expectations. And no, I'm not doing Nico Hülkenberg. He can get a zero because no one wants to just be a reserve. With that, let's begin. Nicholas Latifi, 1 out of 10. I can't imagine things getting any worse for the Canadian. He's had crashes. He's usually last. He can't get out of Q1. I wouldn't be surprised if his cat got run over and his wife cheated on him as well. Not to mention, it's very likely he's getting replaced at year's end. No, there are not many positives to take from Nicholas Latifi. The only driver with no points and a best finish of 12th at Silverstone. The only good thing is, he must have hit rock bottom, so things can't get any worse. Can they? Alexander Albon, 6 out of 10. Nothing too amazing on his return from the DTM wilderness, but Alexander Albon is doing a decent enough job. Miracles are not expected, and scoring the team's only points has been enough to earn praise from the Williams higher-ups. He's finished most races, beats his teammate pretty much all the time. Expectations are not too high for the Thai driver, but currently he is meeting those expectations. Mick Schumacher, 5 out of 10. A couple of races earlier and this would have been lower, but a couple of good performances at Silverstone and Austria have done wonders for Mick Schumacher. It took a while, but he has finally scored his first points. But this is still only a 5, because the speculation that Haas are looking to replace him has not gone away. A few more good performances are needed in the latter half of the season, but things are definitely on the up after his big crash in Monaco. Kevin Magnussen, 7 out of 10. I'm sure he's surprised just to be on the grid. Magnussen had no expectations for 2022 because he wasn't put into the seat until a few weeks before the season started, but on his return he has looked much improved from 2020. At times he has run at the top end of the midfield. He's looked quick, but that hasn't always led to results. He's got caught up with other cars at times and Haas have seemingly dropped back in the last few races. But that fifth place in Bahrain alone is better than Haas have been for a few years. K-Mag needs to score more consistently to get a higher score, but otherwise he is doing a very good job now that he is back in the hot seat. Zhou Guanyu, 4 out of 10. Things started well for the first ever Chinese F1 driver, a point on his debut in Bahrain, but other than an 8th place in Canada, his season has not really progressed much more than that. Not always his fault, he has had a few mechanical issues that have hindered him, as well as the big crash at Silverstone that was not his fault. At times he has driven well, been in the top 10 and kept pace with his teammate, but he needs to finish more races and in the points would be nice. Not an awful debut season, but hardly Lewis Hamilton levels of excellence. Valtteri Bottas, 6 out of 10. Well, the experienced Finn is still in the top 10, but only just. Bottas had a good start to the season, but the wheels have fallen off over the last four races, so to speak. At one point this year, he was out qualifying former teammate Lewis Hamilton, keeping up a good run of making it to Q3 and finishing as high as 5th at Imola. This is more of a case of Alfa Romeo need to improve rather than Bottas, otherwise he's going to slide further than he did in Hungary last year. Yuki Tsunoda, 2 out of 10. I'm a big fan of Yuki Tsunoda but he makes too many mistakes, whether it be crashing into Lance Stroll in Saudi Arabia or sliding out of the pits in Canada. He needs to cut it out. We have seen pace at times but he doesn't score enough points and gets knocked out in Q1 too often, five times so far, as well as only scoring in three races. He's not a rookie anymore, we can expect better. He's not a name I've seen linked with losing his race seat, but if his performances don't improve, then AlphaTauri have plenty of options waiting in Formula 2. Pierre Gasly, 3 out of 10. In 2021, Gasly only failed to score at seven races out of 22. He's failed to score at 10 so far in 2022, and things don't seem to be getting any better. Partly because Alfa Tori seem further off the pace, but Pierre Gasly should be doing better. For a driver who has everyone begging for a top team to give him a chance, his star is starting to fade. Not as quickly as Daniel Kvyat, but since getting chucked from Red Bull, he has had tremendous highs, even a race win. And now in 2022, he's struggling to finish races, mostly out in Q2, not scoring points and only lying in 13th in the championship. 
If things don't improve, we could be witnessing the beginning of the end for Pierre Gasly, who, let's be honest, should never have been demoted by Red Bull in the first place. Lance Stroll, 2 out of 10. How long till this Canadian daddy's boy is expelled from Formula 1? Lance Stroll has been a complete waste of time for so many years now. He almost came good a couple of years ago and I honestly think he peaked with a 12th place finish in the championship. Now he finds points very hard to come by, he crashes fairly often and I'm sick of saying Lance Stroll isn't very good. 4 points from 4 10th place finishes, the best he has done so far in 2022. Aston Martin won't improve until he is gone. Stroll is never going to be a race winner, he is never going to get better, he is dead weight around the neck of Aston Martin. Sack him and employ someone better, like a sack of turnips or a dolphin with a wasting disease. Sebastian Vettel 5 out of 10. Could be better, could be worse. He has scored points here and there and is outperforming his teammate, no shock there. Not a spectacular final season for Sebastian Vettel, but he is at least doing a decent enough job. He seems more concerned with looking after Mick Schumacher, which is nice. This will be a mediocre season for the German veteran. Fernando Alonso, 6 out of 10. The Spaniard has shocked everyone, even Alpine, by moving to Aston Martin for 2023. So far, his 2022 has been decent. He has scored regular points and isn't a million miles behind his teammate. He has scored points at every race bar four, and his performance at Monaco was both amusing and good. His season will get better if he can get past Bottas for ninth and challenge his teammate and Lando Norris for the best of the rest trophy. Outside of that, maybe a podium is possible, but there will be no fireworks for Fernando Alonso in what may be his final season with Alpine. Esteban Ocon, 8 out of 10. The Frenchman is doing everything asked of him. He's been competitive and scoring points at almost every race. He's challenging Lando Norris for 7th and helping Alpine in their fight for 4th. Like Alonso, Ocon's season can only really improve by finishing 7th and maybe getting a podium, but so far this has been a good year for Ocon. Lando Norris, 7 out of 10. McLaren haven't had the pace of last year and that has been the biggest letdown for Lando Norris who is still doing a top job for the team. He is keeping McLaren in the fight against Alpine and his podium at Imola was an incredible job. He was never going to hit the highs of last year but has so far in 2022 been keeping up his performance as the best performer outside of a top team. Daniel Ricciardo, 0 out of 10. His performances have been below par. That much is certain, he's only scored points at 4 races and is so far behind his teammate it's enough to be considered embarrassing. He is far from the Daniel Ricciardo of old, but outside of the racetrack he has been dragged through the mud. McLaren have made it clear he's as wanted as a leper at a birthday party and demanding 12 million to be released from your contract is basically holding your seat to ransom. Alpine might want him, but they honestly don't seem too infused. Does anyone want Daniel Ricciardo? Apparently Australian supercars do. Not a bad career choice at this point. George Russell, 9 out of 10. For all of Mercedes' problems in 2022, George Russell has been really excellent. Always qualifying well and finishing in the top 5 at every race except Britain when it ended in a crash that wasn't Russell's fault. He got his first pole position in Hungary as well. Only thing he hasn't done is win a race, which is coming. He's also beating Lewis Hamilton, which might be the biggest shock of 2022. Russell is currently fourth in the championship and the way this year is going, he could be about to compete for the number two spot of the championship. And if he pulls that off, then that's a 10 out of 10 season. Lewis Hamilton, 6 out of 10. After Monaco, this was a minus 5,000 out of 10 season for the most successful driver in Formula 1's history. But like the Mercedes, Hamilton's season has improved and he's brought himself closer to the top five. He is 112 points behind Verstappen and unlikely to mount a title challenge, which for Hamilton is a bad season, but it hasn't been his fault. Mercedes needed time to get up to speed, but he was and is still being beaten by his young, less experienced teammate. It can get better for Hamilton, but this is a year of failures that has raised questions about his future. Carlos Sainz Jr, 8 out of 10. The Spaniard is a race winner, and for all of Ferrari's problems, he has been decent. He has been slower than Charles Leclerc in terms of outright speed, but he makes up for it with consistency. Except when Ferrari are being inconsistent, and that has hurt Carlos Sainz badly in 2022. He is only 22 points behind his teammate, and if it wasn't for the four retirements, would be beating him. It's put a massive dent in his title bid, 
now over 100 points behind the leader. Ferrari needs to get better, but Carlos Sainz is doing a fantastic job for the team, and maybe more wins will be his reward. Charles Leclerc, 6 out of 10. The main title challenger, or he should be, but he has now drifted away from Max Verstappen. It has been mostly because of Ferrari, some strange strategy choices like the hard tyre in Hungary, but also the crash in France whilst leading. So it's not all Ferrari's fault. He is 80 points behind Verstappen now, and that's going to be tough to catch back up, but it is possible. He needs Ferrari to get their act together, and he needs to win as many races as possible. That is the only way for Leclerc to be champion now. Sergio Perez, 7 out of 10. I didn't know how to mark Sergio Perez's season so far. It has had its good moments. The win at Monaco was a very good drive all round from the Mexican, and he is third in the championship, only 5 points behind Charles Leclerc. So, pretty excellent, almost a 10 out of 10 season. Well, on the flip side, he just looks so much slower than Max Verstappen. No harm in that, he was basically signed to be the number 2 driver, but it did look at one point like he was going to be a title contender, and like everyone else, it's just slipped away a bit. There has been mistakes like Canada and mechanical issues like Bahrain, and in between, there has been some very good drives. Can't really fault Perez, it'll be interesting to see if he can grab second. Max Verstappen, 9.5 out of 10. What can be said about Max Verstappen? He has been dominant so far in 2022, far more than in 2021. He has been by far the best driver in the field. He has added 8 more wins to his CV already in 2022, pulled out a decent lead in the championship and is pulling Red Bull to their first Constructors' Championship win since 2013. He is going to win this championship. The only thing stopping a 10 out of 10 is the early mechanical issues from Red Bull but if his form continues as it is, then he will be champion. So that is a score for every driver in Formula 1 based on their 2022 season so far. Some big winners so far, some massive losers too. It'll be interesting to see how their seasons go from here with 9 races left. How will their scores differ come season end? Let me know your ratings in the comments below. Any you agree with, any you disagree. Feel free to call me wrong. Remember to subscribe for more motorsport action. Thank you for watching and have a good one.